Hey guys, Jim at Rainwater Equipment and Rain Harvesting Supplies here today. Gonna talk about the EasyBox Diver from DAB. The EasyBox Diver is an on-demand, constant pressure, variable speed pump. On-demand meaning when you open a ball valve or a tap or a shower head, the pump's gonna come on and it's gonna have a soft start feature to where it will build the gallons per minute that are needed and it will maintain constant pressure. Then when that valve is closed, it will continue to run until it builds pressure in the line and then shut off, which only takes a few seconds. It's available in single phase 208 to 230 volt. And with the easy box, you're able to set the pressure on the controller that's on the face of the pump. But with a submersible pump like this one, it comes with the Deconnect 2 box, which allows you to use power line communication by putting the power cable for the pump, which is 49 feet long, and for the Deconnect 2 box on the same circuit so that they communicate together. And then you use the DAB uh, Deconnect app on your phone to inter interface with the box and set the pressure uh, that you'd like on the pump. This allows you to have different flow rates, uh, 15 gallons per minute, for example, at around 65 PSI, 20 gallons a minute at around 55 PSI. And of course it's constant pressure, so you're going to be able to uh, set the pressure you want the pump to maintain. And then as water's being used in your application, whether that be inside your home or in an irrigation system, it'll always target the uh, pressure that you set on the pump and it will speed up as water's being consumed to maintain that constant pressure. The EasyBox Diver also comes with built-in dry run protection. So if the pump actually runs dry because there's no water in the tank, it's not going to hurt the pump to do that. Uh, in fact, you can even set this pump outside the tank when you first set it up. When you're doing your pairing and you're setting the pressure with your app and the Deconnect 2 box, if you need to allow the pump to run dry while you're setting it up, it will not affect the pump negatively. The diver includes a place for you to run a rope through so you may lower it down into the storage tank. And it also has this handle that you can carry it with. You never want to lower or carry this pump by the power cable. Because this pump is required to be on the same circuit as the Deconnect box, it's a good idea to pick up one of these 230 volt splitters that you can find online that will allow you to plug this in to the power supply and then plug your uh, power cable for the box and also for the pump into the same circuit. So when you go through the setup uh, with your app, it will prompt you to tell you when to plug the pump in, when to plug the controller in, and how to pair the two and then set your pressure. Uh, the EasyBox Diver comes with an optional accessory called the Dock 68. Uh, the, what the Dock 68 allows you to do is either uh, remove the base on the pump here that has a filtered screen and replace it by setting the pump into this dock and then you're, you can connect a floating filter, if you like, to the dock 68. So in rainwater applications, oftentimes you want to pull water from just below the surface in your water storage tank. And so in this case, uh, we have a two inch floating filter with a stainless steel mesh screen that filters water to 250 micron. And the adapter that's on the end of the hose will screw right in to this base. And so when the pump turns on, it will pull water through this hose and then discharge it out of the top of the pump with this inch and a quarter female threaded discharge. The Dock 68 is also unique in that it allows you to install this pump outside the water tank uh, if you prefer. So the reason you might want to do that would be if you have a, uh, a floodplain, for example, where you're installing the, the water pump uh, and for whatever reason you don't want to put it inside the tank, well you simply remove the base put the Dock 68 on, and then connect your, uh, your pipe that comes from your water tank into the inlet here on the inch and a quarter uh, suction. It's only to be used with a water storage tank because the inbound max pressure on this is 10 PSI. So this isn't to be used in a city water boosting application. Hello, I'm Ron Van Sickle. My company is Secure Water. We install water storage tanks and rainwater harvesting in Central Texas and today we're going to talk about DAB pumps. We recently switched over to using DAB pumps, specifically the EasyBox Diver. We really like the idea of a submersible pump. 
We like to collect the water uh, in large storage tanks and the best place in our mind to put the pump is inside the tank where it's protected from the weather, from insects, from uh, vandals. Uh, we also like the fact that it is uh, not an issue uh, with run dry. If you uh, have a pump that runs dry, once water re-enters the tank, um, it is pretty much ready, primed and ready to go. Uh, we just have to reduce the pressure on the output and you're back in business. It's a variable speed pump, creates constant pressure. By constant pressure, rather than turning off uh, the pump when flow ends and restarting it when pressure drops, this is looking for a narrow window, uh, generally five to 10 PSI. Once the pressure drops enough to start the pump, it will ramp up, it will speed up, it will match the output speed of the pump to the water demand. This maintains a very nice steady pressure continuously. Uh, when the flow slows down, it will slow and, and bring itself to a stop. It has some features such as uh, an anti-lock, anti-cycling. Uh, it has some adjustments for the type of plumbing that you're using. Um, it's very configurable. You can also set your pressure. Um, so if you uh, have an application where your tank is at the bottom of a hill and you need 60 PSI inside your building, you can actually set the pump to 70. So the reason we would set that set point higher when a tank is down at the bottom of the hill is there's head pressure required to get the water up to the house. So if you're wishing to maintain a certain pressure in the house, you can adjust the pump to match. We really like the ease of installation of the dab pumps. Uh, we simply uh, connect the D-Box 2, program it, uh, and uh, we can unplug that box. We can connect the box to the internet. It's, it's got a lot of flexibility depending on the situation that it's in. Another benefit to the dab pumps is the built-in pressure tank. There is a small reservoir inside the tank that is tuned to work with the controller on the constant pressure pumps. This means that we do not need a pressure tank inside the building, which saves space and also saves cost. Those units typically do not last as long as the pumps, especially if they're in a, a harsh environment, uh, such as found in a lot of well houses. There are several modes available when programming the diver. There is an anti-cycling feature. There is a uh, feature that will bump the pump every uh, so often to prevent it from seizing up. There is an anti-freeze feature. And also you are able to view the number of cycles that the pump has run using the DAB app. And if you have it connected to the internet, you are also able to monitor the pump in real time. You can also make setting changes such as pressure and the parameters that uh, it allows adjustment of like the anti-cycling and anti-seize. Our customers enjoy the peace of mind and uh, performance of the DAB pump, especially the uh, the ability to respond to many different flows at the same time within a house. Lots of people can take showers at the same time. Also with the connectivity features, we're able to find out that there's an issue with their system, oftentimes before they do, with text messaging and emails. All right, today we're gonna to talk about installation of DAB's submersible pumps. This is uh, uh, something that could be done with either the Detron series or the, in this case, the Easy Box Diver. When we install tanks here at Secure Water, we typically install them with a riser. The reason for this riser is to allow us to access the pump later on from a, the top of the tank. So we can open the hatch, open a cam lock fitting and access the pump for uh, maintenance. When we take the pumps out of the box from DAB, they are equipped with a screen device at the bottom, a screened intake. Um, in most applications, we are using floating filters uh, for improved water quality, especially with rainwater harvesting. And so we will need to change the screen to uh, a Dock 68, which will adapt the pump for use with a floating intake. It is also possible to use that for um, installation of the pump outside of the tank in certain situations, like a flooded suction application. So the first step uh, is to gather your materials. You'll have your pump, you'll have your Dock 68 kit. Uh, you'll want to remove everything, make sure that you have the parts, you'll have the instructions, you'll have the hardware, 
and you'll have the Dock 68 pieces. And the first step is to remove the screen. This is a Torx bit and you will install it in the three holes and the screen slides off. We will set this aside. The next step is to locate the port at the front of the pump. That is going to align with the input fitting for the Dock 68. We are now going to install the clamps to the side. This is what the Dock 68 adapter will attach to. If you're following the instructions, it will say that there's going to be a clack sound. And there's a bit of a clack there, but the important thing is that they snap together. There are some uh, fins here on the side of the case that need to align uh, in order for them to be oriented properly, but these are now secure on there. Okay, the next step is to make sure we are aligned here with the front. We're going to place the O-ring And that rolls all the way up to the top. We then attach the base. Like so. That up. And it should sit down. There are some fingers in there that align it. And we're going to put our hardware in. Okay, once everything is lined up, we will go ahead and attach the hardware. I recommend getting it all started. And the idea is to make sure everything's aligned before you torque it down. So once we've got everything properly aligned, looks like the O-ring is in position. I'm going to go ahead and start tightening it down. And these don't have to be cranked super tight. We just need to compress the O-ring. Okay. And so that is the Dock 68 installed on the pump and ready to add a floating intake or a flooded suction connection to a tank. Now that we've installed the Dock 68 adapter, uh, when we are working with rainwater harvesting applications, we will typically install a floating intake. The purpose of the floating intake is to draw water from the water column less than the top, higher than the bottom of course, you don't want to get uh, anything off the bottom of the tank. Sedimentation will cause heavy stuff to sink, light stuff to float, that's why that center of the column is so important. To do so, we have uh, a hose with a floating filter on the end, and as you can see there is a ball float that will float in the water and it will always hold this filter unit um, which i've been told is 250 microns it will hold it below the surface of the water um, so that the pump can be drawing the cleanest possible water and to install that we simply screw it in since it is a suction application there's no need to use thread tape um, sometimes you might want to use it just to keep the stainless from uh, seizing together but uh, we've rarely had issues with that Okay, so we have now screwed the floating filter hose into the intake adapter, the Dock 68, and we are ready to install in the tank. You'll want to go ahead and pre-position the floating filter unit into the tank. And install a strap, a lifting strap, and then lower the unit into the tank. The Dock 68 on this unit holds quite a bit of air, so you have to give it a few minutes until it uh, begins to sink for all that air to come out. So now we lower the pump down to the bottom of the tank, connect the cam locks, safety pins, we'll go ahead and remove the hook.
Once you have your plumbing attached, you can install the cord to the outside of the tank. I like to hang the excess off the top of my riser and we will secure our cord. We like to use zip ties for that. If you're installing the EasyBox diver, you will need the Deconnect 2 box and the Deconnect app on your phone. You'll plug the Deconnect 2 box in and establish communications with the app. Once you've established communications with the app, you will be prompted to plug in the pump. The Diver Series pumps require a NEMA 6 uh, plug for 230 volt. For the Diver Series, the Deconnect 2 box is required to be on the same circuit. In this case, we have a dual, a duplex outlet at 230 volts. So both boxes get plugged in to the outlets that are on the same circuit. In the event that only a single NEMA 6 outlet is available, a splitter unit can be used so that both devices can be plugged in to the same outlet together. This will allow you to get through the programming operation. Once the unit is programmed, you can remove the Y connector and plug the pump straight into the plug. Once you've established communications with your D-Connect box and the pump, it's possible to set up parameters such as your pressure setting, anti-cycling, and establish alarms. If this unit is to be left outdoors, it will need to be in a weatherproof enclosure. Okay, now we've plugged in our pump. It has come on for the first time, and it's ready to uh, enjoy plentiful water pressure. So that's the EasyBox Diver, and you can find this on rainwaterequipment.com or rainharvestingsupplies.com, or give us a call at 877-331-7008.